Olive was standing on the deck of a huge wooden sailing ship in the middle of the sea. OK, look at all that water. Ahoy there! Olive saw a cat wearing a dashing outfit and a sailor's hat. Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Chris Columbus, the most famous explorer in all of the seven seas. Hello, my name's Olive. I've never met a famous explorer before. Ah, uh, Olive, you don't have any food on you, do you? Me and my crew are absolutely starving. Olive turned around to see a chubby <coughs> bulldog and a Jack Russell. Oh, hello. These are my trusty shipmates, Bully the Cook and Master Jack Russell, the deckhand. We're really hungry, complained Jack. I'm sorry. What happened to all your food? A few days ago, we sailed through a terrible storm. An enormous wave washed all our food overboard, along with my map of the Seven Seas. Now we're down to our very last tiny piece of stale bread, said Bully sadly. Oh dear, that's not going to fill you up, said Olive. And without my map, we're lost and can't find our way back home. I'm not very good with maps and directions, but maybe I can find you something to eat. Olive looked at Bully's vest and Jack's mop. Hmm, a mop? A string vest? I think I may have an idea. Olive tugged on a loose end of Bully's vest. It unravelled into a long piece of string, which she tied to the end of the mop. Oh, what's that for? Asked the confused Captain Chris. It's a fishing rod. We can use it to catch fish for dinner. I just need something to get the fish to bite. Olive spotted the last scrap of bread in the basket. She tied it to the end of the fishing line and threw it in the water. Oh! Cried the crew. Our last scrap of bread. You'll just have to wait. So they waited and they waited. All their tummies rumbled because they were so hungry. After what seemed like ages, there was a tug on the line. Hooray! Olive pulled a massive fish out of the sea. Hooray for Olive! Hooray! Cheered the crew. Olive caught fish after fish and all sorts of other tasty sea creatures. Then, suddenly, Olive felt one almighty tug. The crew all grabbed hold of the rod and together they pulled out a huge oh. whale who immediately sneezed and from its blowhole gushed a spout of seawater with a map on top. My map! Now we're no longer lost. Let's celebrate. Woohoo! <laughs> so Bully cooked the biggest fishy feast ever. They ate and ate until... They could eat no more. Would you like any dessert, Olive? Jellyfish and ice cream? Oh, no, thank you. Just the thought of it makes me feel all wobbly. Everyone laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. Actually, I've been sailing on the high seas. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> Olive found herself floating in the sea on a bright pink lilo. She was wearing a life jacket and some cool sunglasses. Well, this is very relaxing, said Olive. The sun was shining and there were two dolphins leaping in and out of the sea nearby. Wahoo! Olive looked around and Ooh. saw a surfer riding a big wave and he was heading straight towards her. Kick! Watch out, dude, coming through. The surfer shouted, but it was too late. Ah. He collided with Olive and they went flying into the air. Yeah! Whoa, wipeout! Olive and the surfer both washed up on the beach where a big crowd was watching. Oh, dear. I'm sorry I got in your way. I'm Olive. Hey, no worries, dude. I'm Sunny Ray, said the surfer as he <laughs> shook seaweed out of his hair. Oh, no. My lucky surfboard has disappeared. This is a big tube master surfing competition. I'll never win it without my lucky board. 
Olive, could you maybe help me find it, please? Well, I can try. Where do you think it could be? Dude, it's probably caught on something underwater. But it'll be impossible to find. The ocean is so huge. Olive looked out to the ocean and spied the dolphins leaping in and out of the water. Hmm. A lost lucky surfboard. Some dolphins. I think I may have an idea. Sonny, follow me. Olive and Sonny swam out to the dolphins. Hello, I'm Olive, and this is my friend Sonny. What's up, dolphin dudes? Hey, dear, how's it hanging? We're looking for Sonny's surfboard. We think it's caught underwater somewhere. Could you maybe help us find it, please? We'd be happy to help you guys. Awesome, dude, thanks. Just hold on to our fins and take a deep breath. Olive and Sonny each held on to one of the dolphins. Let's go! The two dolphins swam down to the seabed with Olive and Sonny clinging to their fins. They spotted Sonny's surfboard, but a giant clam had his big mouth clamped around it. Hey, Mr. Giant Clam, can we have that surfboard back, please? Sonny swam over to the stubborn giant clam and tried to wrestle the board out of his big mouth, but the clam would not let go. They all swam back to the surface. It's no good. That big old clam isn't going to give me my board back. Hmm. There must be something else you can surf on. I've got a great idea. Why don't you surf on our backs? Dude, I love it. Yes, that sounds good. Uh, awesome. So Olive and Sonny hopped onto the dolphin's backs. All set? Yeah. yeah. Just then, a big wave curled its way towards them. The dolphins rode the wave with Sonny and Olive balancing on their backs just as if they were on surfboards. Extreme. The crowd went wild! Olive and Sonny did some cool surfing moves. They look amazing! The gold medal winner is Sonny Ray! And Olive won the silver! You won the two masters without your lucky board! Dude, I wouldn't have been able to do it without you or the dolphin dudes. Then something floated in on a wave. It was Sonny's surfboard. My board, most excellent. I guess that giant clam didn't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they all laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. But Greg, actually, I entered an awesome surfing competition. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive was in a small, dimly lit room. In front of her were lots of buttons and levers and colourful flashing lights. Where am I? Some lights shone out over a beautiful underwater world outside the window. Heck, what a view! There were hundreds and hundreds of fish swimming around in front of an enormous blue canyon. Oh, I'm in a submarine deep in the ocean. I can't wait to explore. Olive pushed a big red lever marked forward and the submarine dived deep down into the canyon. Olive spotted the opening to a cave. Hmm, interesting, said Olive as she drove her submarine right into the cave. It's even darker in here than it was before. Olive drove through a big patch of seaweed. Oh, no! Now I can't see where I'm going! The seaweed suddenly came to life and picked up the submarine. Ow. Then in the headlights loomed the big green face of an octopus. Hello, bubbled the octopus. Okay. Who are you? My name's Jonah. I've been trapped inside this whale for days. It's so good to finally meet someone new. My name's Olive. But what do you mean, trapped inside the whale? I just drove into a cave. Oh, no, that was a huge whale's mouth you drove into, Olive. And now he's closed it shut. There's no escape. Okay, that doesn't sound good. We need to make the whale open his mouth again. Maybe I could turn my engines all the way up and then the bubbles will make the whale cough. Then we can escape when he opens his mouth. Olive turned the submarine's engines onto full power and the water started to bubble up. Oh, that didn't work. But then the bubbles Olive had made tickled Jonah on the tummy. <laughs> oh, those bubbles tickle. Hmm, an octopus with eight legs. Tickling 
I think I may have an idea. Jonah, if you use all your legs, you can tickle the inside of the whale's stomach and make him laugh. Then we can escape through his mouth. Oh, I think that might just work. He stretched out his eight long arms and began to tickle the whale's tummy. Tickle harder! Tickle harder! Cried Olive. Jonah tickled as fast as he could. A wall of bubbles started rushing down the tunnel towards Olive and Jonah. Watch out! Breaking! What's happening? I think we might be going out of the top. The top? Olive and Jonah were fired out of the whale's blowhole, up high in the sky. Then they started to fall back towards the water. <laughs> Jonah clung to Olive's submarine with his eight tentacles as they fell. His body inflated like a parachute, drifting them both gently down to the surface of the water. Well, that was a lovely gentle landing. Oh, thanks so much, Olive. I'm free at last. That's OK. I think we've all had a whale of a time. <laughs> they both laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. OK. Actually, I've been helping an octopus escape a whale. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. It was a place covered in soft yellow sand and it was next to a glistening blue sea. It's a lovely sandy beach. Olive looked down and saw she was wearing flippers. She tried to walk but fell flat on her beak. <laughs> Don't worry, little ostrich! Boomed a loud voice. I'll save you! A strong-looking horse helped Olive up. He had the shiniest mane of hair and the brightest smile she had ever seen. He wore a red jacket and spoke into a megaphone. Hi, I'm David Hoppyhoof, beach lifeguard. <laughs> hey, your loud voice is making me ears ring. You'll get used to it. I'm always here, so if anybody gets into any trouble on this beach, I will rescue them. Where you're a real hero. Just doing my job. Boom, David, as he proudly combed his shiny hair. <laughs> Just then, Olive heard a cry Help. coming from the sea. Two tigers were in trouble. Their claws had punctured their rubber dinghy. Hail, we're sinking. David, those tigers need your help. But David had disappeared. Olive couldn't see him anywhere. <laughs> then she noticed a very funny-looking <laughs> sandcastle. Olive shook her head. Why are you pretending to be a sandcastle, David? Those tigers need you to rescue them. I can't. But that's your job. You're the beach lifeguard. I was only pretending. I've always wanted to be a lifeguard, so I borrowed this outfit. The truth is, I never rescued anyone. David started to cry. <laughs> you see, I hate the water. It makes my hair go all frizzy. Help! We're still sinking! Olive spotted David's huge comb and a surfboard lying nearby. A comb? A surfboard? I think I may have an idea! David and Olive grabbed the surfboard and using David's comb as a paddle, they paddled out and rescued the tigers. Hooray! You're our heroes! They paddled back to the beach. David didn't get a drop of water on his shiny hair until... There you go, my tiger friends. Back safely on dry land. As David lifted the tigers onto the beach, he started to wobble. Oh, 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 oh. And then he toppled backwards into the sea. Oh, hey, your hair looks different. Exclaimed Olive. I love it. It's so big and it's so bouncy. It's really beach chic. Excuse me, came a stern voice. It belonged to an even bigger horse. who really did look like a lifeguard. My name is Big Jim, and I am the lifeguard of this beach. What are you doing with my megaphone? I'm sorry. I only borrowed it so I could pretend to be a lifeguard like you. Big Jim smiled. <laughs> I think you should keep it. After seeing you bravely rescue those tigers, I think you would make a great assistant lifeguard. 
Why, thank you! Bean David, he was thrilled. He couldn't believe his dream had finally come true. And now you've got the perfect beach haircut as well, said Olive. They all laughed, <laughs> and as they did, Olive realised <laughs> it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. Back. Actually, I've been helping Hoppy you for lifeguard. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive, Olive found herself on a small oh. boat in the middle of a large lake. All around her were purple hills covered with heather. Behind the wheel of the boat stood a man. He was peering into the water. Hello there, I'm Olive. Are you looking for something? Hey, Olive. Chuck McNichol. Yes, I sure am looking for something. Nessie. What's Nessie? The Loch Ness Monster. I've been sailing up and down Loch Ness all week, but it sure is hard to find Nessie. Olive suddenly heard a low, rumbling, groaning sound. Quick! What's that noise? Oh, I need something to try and attract Nessie, you see, so I'm playing her whale sounds through these waterproof speakers. Oh. So what have you seen so far? Two fish, a turtle and a medium-sized crab. Oh. Well, I could help you look for Nessie if you'd like. Oh, thanks, uh, but I've had enough searching for now, so uh, I'm going back to my hotel to take a nap. Oh, yeah. Is that more whale song? <laughs> no, that's Bobby McDonald. He owns the bagpipe shop. Hello there. Any luck finding Nessie? <laughs> Afraid not, Bobby. Your dog seems to like those bagpipes. Aye, he loves them. In fact, all my pets love the sound of the pipes. Olive like the sound of the pipes, hmm. too. A Loch Ness monster that won't show its face. A musical instrument that animals love. I think I may have an idea. Chuck! No time to waste. We need to go back out onto the log, please. Oh, all right, Olive. And Bobby, can you come with us? And bring your bagpipes, please. Of course. OK, Bobby. Play your pipes into this microphone. Then the sound will play out through the underwater speakers. The sound of Bobby's bagpipes echoed out across Loch Ness and down into the water. Bobby played and played and played. But still, there was no sign of Nessie. Oh, oh, I can't play any longer. I need to lie down. We can't give up now. I'm going to have a try. Olive took the pipes from Bobby and began to play. Mm, it didn't sound very good. Oh, this won't work. Olive, that sounds awful. But as Olive played, she was silhouetted against the setting sun. It made her look a very strange shape. Then something large and mysterious rose out of the water. It was Nessie. Nessie, I can't believe it. Yiffy. Oh, it truly is her. Hello there. Hello, Nessie. Glad you dropped by. I need my eyes testing. I saw your shape there and I thought it was another Nessie. Oh, well, uh, I hope you're not too disappointed. Oh, no. I've always loved the sound of the pipes. Hey, uh, Nessie, do you mind if I take a few snaps? Uh, well, normally I don't do pictures, but um, go, go right then. Just this once. Say cheese. Oh, cheese. Cheese! Oh, what of you two? Oh, no. So they took lots of photos of Nessie, Olive and Chuck. Finally, it was time for Nessie to leave. Bye, everyone! Bye! Bye. Bye. Bye now. Hey, how about one last tune on the pipes, Olive? I don't think so, Chuck. I think it's high time I pipe down. Oh, yeah. They all laughed. And as they did, oh. Olive realised <laughs> it was time to go. Typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. Okay. Actually, I helped find the Loch Ness Monster. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive was wearing a large diving helmet what? and she was sitting on a strange creature that looked a bit like a horse. Okay. Good thing I've got this breathing helmet. 
What's going on? Asked Olive. You're about to take part in a seahorse race. Said a little jellyfish who was also sitting on a seahorse. There was another bigger jellyfish on a seahorse too. A seahorse race? How exciting! I'm Olive, by the way. I'm Jessie. I'm a little nervous as this is my first ever race. Don't worry, Jessie. Maybe we can help each other. Um, okay. Thanks, Olive. Oh, that means the race has started. Come on, Olive. The bigger jellyfish galloped off, and Jessie and Olive rode after him. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, hold on to your seahorses! Olive and Jessie galloped towards the first obstacle, a narrow gap between two huge rocks. The big jellyfish rode straight through, but when Jessie reached the gap, she stopped. Oh, it's too narrow. I can't get through. Of course you can. Follow me. Olive skillfully rode her seahorse through the gap and Jessie followed. <laughs> Next, they reached a coral maze. Oh, this looks really twisty. We can do it. Stay close to me, Jessie. Olive twisted and turned through the coral maze and Jessie rode through behind. Then Olive and Jessie reached the most difficult part of the race, an old, dark shipwreck. We need to ride through, but I've heard there's a scary sea monster inside. It's probably just a story, Jessie. We'll be fine if we ride through together. Um, I suppose so. Olive rode into the shipwreck and Jessie followed. It was rather dark inside and even Olive was a little scared. What was that strange noise? Um, I'm sure it was nothing to worry about. But suddenly, a creature with a long, sharp nose appeared out of the darkness. Oh, the sea monster! They raced out of the shipwreck as fast as they could, but Jessie did not not look where she was going and rode straight into a forest of seaweed. Oh, 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 I've got tangled up, Olive. Olive tried to pull Jessie free, but it was no good. Hmm. Tangled seaweed, a sea monster with a sharp pointy nose. I think I may have an idea. Jessie, I'm going back into the shipwreck. Olive, don't be silly. But Olive rode bravely back into the dark shipwreck. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sea Monster. Please, could you help me? I'm not a sea monster. I'm just a swordfish. I can't help having this scary pointy nose. My name's Swordy, by the way. Oh, I'm Olive. My friend has got tangled up in some seaweed. I was hoping you could free her with your sharp, sore nose. Of course. Swordy to the rescue. Swordy used his sharp nose to carefully cut Jessie free from the seaweed. Thanks, Swordy. Yes, thank you. You're not so scary after all. Go. No, you've got to finish the race. Jessie rode off fast with Olive close behind. Soon they could see the bigger jellyfish ahead as the finish line approached. I did it, Olive. I won. You say we did, Jessie. The crowd love you. They're cheering themselves. Horse, see? <laughs> they both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Typical Olive, daydreaming again. Said her mum. Again? Actually, I took part in an underwater seahorse race. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear. Said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> <laughs>